Because it used to be, we were really excited, right? This is going to be the oldest thing in the solar right. system. Right. It's going to be older than 7 billion years old. Now, well, it's no longer maybe that old. Right. right. Maybe it is It is quite contemporary. Yep. So there, there's a bunch of, you know, very cool science that is still happening trying to figure this out. The first paper that tried to answer this was from Oxford in the Astrophysical Journal, Letters. This was in July. And they said that it's from the thick disk. The thick disk is the part of the Milky Way, though, the stuff that we see in the night sky when we look up, mm -hmm. there's a that's the thin disk. The thick disk is the part that's right above or below. That's an old population of stars. They've quantified that a lot of these stars are between 7 to 14 billion years old, mm -hmm. right? So it's it's much older than the sun, which is about 5 billion years, years old, old, right? Right. So that, that was the first one. Then there's some new work that came out in September. Um, this is not in a journal, but it's, it's on the archive. And... It was from the Tenerife Observatory, a bunch of um, people there in Spain. They, they used this um, Python package called Milky Way Potential 2022, which basically what, what it can do is it can take your object and then run back the clock for however long that you want, mm -hmm. given the Milky Way potential. Mm -hmm. And what the original paper was saying was that, you know, because it's got a, such a high velocity perpendicular to the disk, it must be coming from up there. Yeah. Right? But the potential landscape is such that when it goes above the disk, the disk is going to start pulling back. Mm -hmm. And so there's going to be some oscillation yeah. through the disk, right? Yeah, it's yeah. going to go up, yep. and then it's going to come back down, and it's going to go down, then it's going to get pulled, pulled back, back up, up again. Yes. Right? So how big is that amplitude right. uh, yeah, yeah, of yeah, that yeah, oscillation? Yeah, yeah. Basically, how how high, how far above and below the thin disk yes. is, it, is it sort is it, of... Is it going, is right? It go, is right, it going right. all the way to the thick disk? Because we also have... Um, velocity profiles of the stars that are up there. Mm -hmm. There's some typical trajectories that those guys take, and there's some tr typical trajectories that the, that the thin disk takes. Mm -hmm. Which one does this thing belong to? Got it. Right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what they did. And what they think is happening is that it stayed basically within the thin, thin disk, and they're ruling out the fact that it could be in that upper thick disk. Okay. They found where the velocity profile of this comet is compared to the stars mm -hmm. in these two regions, and it's more aligned with the thin disk. Interesting. Right? Okay. So this is kind of a clap back to the Oxford paper. Which was that original. This is you good know? because when we, first, when we first covered this, the Oxford paper was the only one. Was out. the only one, and everyone was like, okay, oh, that's got to be it. Yeah, right. But the process of science is extremely dynamic. You know, there's a bunch of researchers vying for the spotlight. Right. So, you know, someone's going to someone's going to say this. The other person's going to say that. Uh, and now it calls into question um, whether it is as old as they say they are. Mm.